Hello, yes, welcome back. Today, I want to talk about some of the necessary votes that should be present on the RAM circuit to enable the laptop make display. Uh, most times, as you have seen, many laptops fail to display due to RAM problems. And sometimes when you change RAM, the laptop can display. Sometimes when you clean this slot and clean on the terminals of the RAM, the laptop displays. However, there is a condition whereby you put a new RAM, you try to clean on the slot, but the laptop does not still display. So today I want to go through some of the necessary votes that you can measure around this slot and confirm whether your laptop has got a problem on the RAM circuit or not. So these signals apply to all laptops. As you know, all laptops use a standard D type of RAM. If it is DDR3, it is, can be supported in all types of RAM. If it is DDR4, it can be supported in all types of RAM. So you can still use these kind of voltages and measure them in any laptop brands. So the first kind of voltage that we look up to is 1.5. DDR3 RAM uses 1.5 volts and DDR3L uses 1.35. So this motherboard I'm having here supports DDR3 and DDR3L. So on this slot, on this coil, this coil is the one that gives out RAM volts. And when you put in the charger, the first type of volts to come out is the charging volts. Then after the charging volts, 3.3 volts come up, then 5 volts come up, then RAM volts come up. So 1.5 is the general power that powers up the whole RAM circuit. So after that voltage is up, the laptop releases a half of that voltage, which is called VTT. So this voltage is always a half of the main power for RAM. If the RAM uses 1.5, it will release 0.75. If it uses 1.35, it will release 0.65. So this voltage comes up on pin 204 and pin 203. So this voltage is used for powering up the signals that communicate with the RAM. So after VTT is up, the laptop releases 3.3 volts on pin 200 and 203. This type of voltage comes from the chipset and these voltages are called SM data and SM clock. SM data is the kind of signal that the chipset uses to communicate instructions to RAM. So clock in simple terms is the rate of which communication is handled on the RAM. So these two signals should be present on pin 200 and 203 for the laptop to display. So after those signals are up, the laptop releases a signal we call DRAM reset signal. This one comes at pin 30. This signal is very, very crucial on the laptop circuit because this is a signal that turns on the RAM. Without this signal, the laptop cannot display. And basically, the absence of this signal does not automatically mean the laptop RAM is faulty. Sometimes, the laptop does not release this signal until certain voltages are being released. And sometimes, if you're having an issue with a laptop that does not display, the first signal to measure is DRAM signal on pin 30. It will tell you a lot about whether your laptop has got some RAM issues or there is some votes that are missing on the motherboard. So after those votes are up, the laptop releases another type of votes. This votes is called VREF D2 and VREF CA. So VREF D2 is the type of voltages that enables the laptop to write and read information on the RAM. So this signal comes up at pin 1 and is a percentage of the 0.7 of VTT signal that we talked about earlier. Then it also releases another signal which is called VREF CA. VREF CA stands for command address. So the command signals or the command instructions that come to the RAM use this type of voltage to easily communicate to the RAM. So after those VIF signals are up, there is another type of signal that should also be present on the RAM circuit. And this signal is called 3.3S. Yes, the laptop uses 1.5, but it is always 3.3 signals on the RAM circuit. And this signal happens at pin 199. So these are the general signals that should be present on the RAM circuit so that the computer is able to display. So these kind of signals sound to be so scaring at start. However, as you go on, you actually get used to them. So I hope that this video can help you out to know the different communication that goes on to your laptop before fully displaying. If you find this video interesting, you can subscribe because I'm going to be making some kind of videos like this in the future. You can share and if you have any questions, you can write them down in the comments. I'll try my best to answer them all. And thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.